Hey, I'm John. I'm Michael. And this is the Gadget Lab Show, and this week we're going to talk about a new e-reader, and a Pebble smartwatch, and a huge honkin' speaker. But first up, the e-reader. The e-reader. Here it is, in all of its glory. This is the new version of the Nook Simple Touch e-ink reader. So what's the secret sauce? What's the big feature in this one? The big feature of this is that it has been updated from last year's model to include a backlight. So it has an LED backlight, a lot like uh, the kind you'd find in like a tablet or a phone, that illuminates the screen from behind and makes it easier to read while you're laying in bed. So it's e-ink, but it's got the backlight, so it's sort of the best of both worlds. Sort of the best of both worlds, yes. That is, that is correct. Uh, the screen itself is the same touch-sensitive screen, so uh, it's Barnes & Noble's best e-reader that you can buy. Uh, it's their, um, their flagship e-reader, mm -hmm. and uh, it just you know, has this fancy new feature on it. So, uh, so I'm a Kindle guy. Mm -hmm. This is the competitor. What about this would compel me to make the switch? Uh, well, I mean, basically, it's the illumination behind mm -hmm. the screen because the regular Kindle, the Kindle Touch, I think is like $100 for the non-3G version, just for the Wi-Fi version. This Wi-Fi version with the, the Barnes & Noble Nook with the illumination is $140. So it's an extra mm -hmm. 40 bucks for the light. Now, what you could do if you're a Kindle person is get a Kindle with a case with a light in it. Right. The, and those, there's an LED that sort of swings out. Yeah, case. like it's sort yeah. of a little cantilevered thing. Right, uh, right. And those, you know, you can get them aftermarket or from Amazon for around 40 to 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also, you'll be carrying around your Kindle in a case. This has a light without the case, which is pretty cool. Um, the light is not necessarily as good as I was expecting it to be. Uh, I've been playing around with it a little bit today. And um, it's it says that it illuminates the whole it illuminates the whole screen mm -hmm. evenly, uh, but it's a little patchy. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see that it's uh, bleeding out from the top a little bit, and it's a little bit dimmer in the center than it is along the edges. But you know, by and large, you can read your book while you're sitting around in the dark, and right. that's really all that matters. And so, if you're already invested in the whole Barnes and Noble universe, this might be the ne next best step. Yeah, this is an upgrade for right. you. Right. Um, if you're trying to decide between the Kindle and the the Nook. Um, I would I would recommend that you don't buy a device based on the actual device itself. Right. Uh, that you buy a device based on the platform that that device is attached to. Okay, so I'll put you on the spot. Platform-wise, Amazon or BNN? I prefer Amazon. Me too. I do. And actually, I do like their hardware a lot as well. It's not all about the platform for me with, mm -hmm. with the Kindle. Uh, I like the buttons, also the screen mapping on the Kindle for the touch features, mm -hmm. and the menus are different than the uh, than the Barnes and Noble Nook. Um, but you know, I have a couple of family members who have tried both, and they absolutely love the Nook. I think for for a lot of people, they're Kindle people because the Kindle arrived first. Right. Um, but people who are making the decision now. A lot of them are picking the Nook, so it's still you know kind of a kind of an even an even split. Right. They're out there more. The TV commercials, they're, they're getting more press. They're in the public mind share. Yeah, yeah. and in retail, uh, both of the devices right. are out there. We should also not forget about the, um, the third player, the Kobo Touch. <laughs> <laughs> or should we? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we gave them a plug. That, that's about what they get. That's right. Uh, okay, so that is the latest from Barnes & Noble. Next up, we're going to hear the latest about the Pebble smartwatch. <laughs> So Alexandra, you traveled to Palo Alto and saw the new Pebble smartwatch in person. Uh, what did you see? Well, basically I saw a prototype of the smartwatch. Uh, they don't have a totally finished product yet, but I did get to see a working prototype um, and I even wore it on my wrist. Um, I saw the display, which is kind of all the rage of Pebble. Um, it, what, it's basically what makes Pebble special and it looks really great. Um, it's a memory LCD display, so it's kind of like e-ink in that you can read it in the sun really easily and it actually pops a lot better mm -hmm. in the sun. And it actually refreshes faster than e-ink displays. Like Kindles take a couple seconds. This right. is fast. Right. And so it's a, it's a smartwatch that mm -hmm. uh, was uh, was born from a Kickstarter project. Right. And, and they have they already closed the the campaign? It hasn't closed yet, but they've completely sold out of the watches. So, so they've sold a total of 85,000 watches, and that's what they capped at. Um, and right now they're about at $10.2 million on Kickstarter, so that's, they're still accepting 
uh, pledges, but and, and that that ten million is a record for Kickstarter right, right it's, now. Right, it's it's triple the right. previous record. So what are they going to be doing with all this money? What kind of new development did they show off? Well, they showed me a couple partnerships. They recently announced uh, that they are partners with RunKeeper. It's a running app. And then yet today, I think they announced that they are partnering with Twine, which was another Kickstarter campaign. It's basically a box that has Wi-Fi connection and a sensor. And you can use if this, then that, sort of um, if, let's say, the Twine box gets shaked then it'll send a message to Pebble. And so now Twine and Pebble are in partnership right. together. And so what kind of real world applications could, could, could right. Twine deliver to this, to this thing living on my wrist? Mm -hmm. So you could attach Twine to, let's say, a door. And mm -hmm. when someone knocks, the Twine will sense that someone's knocking the door. And it can send um, a message like, somebody's knocking on the door right. to the Pebble. And right. so even if you don't hear the door knocking, you'll know. So very crafty. So it goes way beyond just simply letting you know when a phone comes into your smartphone. Right. Right. When a call comes in right. <laughs> into your smartphone. Uh, OK, so when are we going to finally see the Pebble watches? They are scheduled to ship in September. So, But they're only going to ship to the original Kickstarter backers, which that's 85,000 watches. And then after that, people who didn't back them on Kickstarter can supposedly buy them from the website. Got it. So uh, I'm going to be first in line, really anticipating this watch. It, it seems super cool. And yeah. it seems to be getting cooler by the, by the day with, with the kind of things we're learning about. Right. OK, next up, 10 inches of big audio. OK, Mike, this looks like a very familiar object, yet it's grown larger somehow. Yeah, it's the big jam box. And guess what? It looks just like a jam box, except it's bigger. Much bigger. <laughs> yeah, the, the original uh, is about six inches yeah. uh, by maybe like two, two and a half, something like that. This is a full, I don't know, about 10 inches right. and uh, about three and a half on the, on the side. So it's giant. OK, so portable audio. Yeah. Everyone wants to know, is it loud? Yes. And and does it vibrate on the table the way the little jam box does? Uh, yes, but not in, in the annoying way, only okay. in the good way. Okay, tell us about it. Uh, well, I mean, you know, it's it's a Bluetooth speaker. Uh, the the jam box is the most popular Bluetooth speaker you can get out there. It's two hundred dollars uh, for the for the original. Right. Uh, it's been out for about a year and a half, and everybody loves it. Huge hit, big hit at Apple stores. This is the new one. It's three hundred. It is. Uh, very, very similar in the way that it works, the way that it pairs with your phone, the way that you can control it with just about any Bluetooth device. Um, and of course, it looks very much the same. It is way louder. And not only louder, because volume is one part of the equation, the other part is clarity. Right. So it sounds much better. It has better bass, it has better treble, it just has better definition all around, better stereo image because the speakers are a little bit further apart. Right. And the vibrations. Uh, the old jam box dances around on the table and, and it knocks off the table and dies and you know it gets all bent out of shape and everything. This one has these giant rubber feet on the bottom, right. so it doesn't really move. Uh, it does move a little bit. It vibrates. It uses the whole table as sort of like a you know resonant device, so you get a little bit more of like a boom out of it when you have it on a table versus like on a marble or or on sand or something like that. Uh, so yes, it does vibrate. Uh, it'll it'll rattle your teeth from about four or five inches away. And so how how large a room can it fill? Uh, well, it fills um, actually it it fills just about any room in the house, mm -hmm. uh, except for the biggest foyer. <laughs> uh, but it fills mm -hmm. it fills parlors, conservatories, <laughs> bathrooms, antechambers, uh, antechambers, <laughs> panic rooms. Uh, you could actually get away with a small jam box in the panic room. But um, you know the thing that I noticed about this that's that's really cool is it works way better outside. Outside, so yeah, like on a back explain. deck or in a backyard yeah. or in the beach or something like that. Because it's totally wireless, it has rechargeable battery inside. Right. And it runs on Bluetooth. You can just carry it with you anywhere that you know it's comfortable to carry something that's kind of big and bulky and weighs yeah. about. Three or four it is, and it is big. It comes. There's an optional uh, carrying case for it too. Yeah, it kind of looks like one of those like sixer coolers. <laughs> it's like it's sort of a neoprene zip-up right. thing with a handle on it. But you can, can sort of it. pull out the jam box with a little bit of drama. Yeah. When you're you know, at the beach or wherever. Yeah. And so yeah, packed up. It's about the size of a bottle of wine. So anywhere where you'd feel comfortable carrying a bottle of wine, 
uh, you can carry this. So, you know, the park or it's a friend's house or I don't know, your roof right. for the fireworks. And it's, it's heavy, a lot heavier than the original, but it's not as heavy as you would think just from looking at it. Right. 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 Uh, yeah, actually, when, when I first picked it up, I reached for it with two hands and found out it's actually quite comfortable just carrying around with one hand. Right. But it is a brick and it is sort of a beast, but it sounds great. So you sacrifice portability, but you get utility. So it's, it's already been reviewed mm -hmm. on, on Wired, and yeah. what did it get? Uh, it got a thumbs up, or is that trademarked? <laughs> Uh, I, I, gave, I believe I gave it an 8 out of 10. Got, yeah, 8 out of yeah. 10. And, uh, I, dinged, yeah. I dinged it on price uh, because 300 bucks is a lot of cheese to throw at a speaker. Right. But it's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. Everybody I've shown it to wants one and they want to know where to get it and how much and all that. So It's the new IT portable speaker. Yes, and it replaces the old jam box. Which, which was <laughs> the IT yeah. uh, portable speaker. And still an excellent speaker. That's I right. still recommend that to people. Okay, so now you have two jam boxes to choose from for different size applications. Uh, and that is it for Portable Audio. This has been the Gadget Lab Show. Check us out next week.